Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. I have already um, tinkered with the coin mechanism from that video arcade machine that I got for free and I'm not sure if I've put that video out yet, but I have the bill mechanism. And so I thought maybe we'd take a little bit of a look at this. I had to tinker with it a little bit, but I got it working. Um, not really much to it. In fact, it, uh, let's see here, I think, yeah, okay, so that, um, there's some pins in the way, but if you can see, let's see if I can get some good light on that. If you can see in there, there's just a couple of belts right here and uh, some little LEDs and they scan the bill to detect if it's genuine. And in fact, there's a, well, I see a date stamp on here. This one is from 2002 um, and they make different firmware versions on this. So this one does not have the firmware to read the latest $5 bills. Um, it will read some of the other bills, but uh, not that's in 2008, I think is when they made the, the $5 bills bigger. Um, and so you can snap this together and then I had this apart earlier. And uh, sorry, I had something pop up my screen, the little motor in there, the little circuit boards. And you can actually pull this board out and that's where you would upgrade the firmware to a new other version. There's really not much to, to look at in there. But what was interesting is trying to get it operational. There's a little bit of information out there about this thing, but not a ton. And so I wound up, um, I found it like a two page PDF that gave me what the wiring diagram was. And let me show you a little bit about that. Uh, while I'm putting this back together, on the left here is a board that I bought from AliExpress a long time ago. And I don't even think it ever made it into a mailbag video, but this is, uh, this takes an ATX power supply and turns it into negative 12, positive 12, uh, positive 5, and positive 3.3 volts. And I just printed this little enclosure because I was doing some work on my 3D printer, so I needed to, to tweak some things. But, um, you know, so many channels make bench power supplies out of uh, ATX power supplies. I didn't really feel like I needed to do one for my channel. Um, I In my escape rooms, a lot of times, and maybe I'll put a picture up, but in my escape rooms, I would take... Uh, one ATX power supply and use it to power the entire room and uh, through like a little distribution system. But the main reason why I have this out as opposed to my bench power supply is because the ratings on this thing uh, use 5 volts and 12 volts at the same time. And uh, I figured out later that I didn't necessarily need both of those. And let me show you why. Let me get <laughs> the biggest ATX power supply I own. Uh, it's just ridiculous. I had it in one of my servers. Uh, so I'm going to power this thing up. Now, if you've never messed around with the ATX power supply to, um, to, uh, uh, bench power supply modifications, you'll know that you need to put a little bit of a load across the thing in order to get it to fire up. And let's see, I think I have that off. Um, you need to put a little bit of a load across the power supply to get the thing to power up and there is a little resistor under that thing under the cover here that makes that happen so uh, i'm going to turn this back off and what we need to do first is hook up the orange slide the power spot all the way we need to hook the red up to 12 volts and the orange 12 volts positive the orange up to ground A little loose down there. Hmm. I think we've got, we'll see if we have a decent enough connection. So then we can put this wiring harness in and that's what we need to get started. This is a weird wiring harness. You can, there we go. Got a first try. That was the first time I've gotten a first try. So let's see. Yep. Okay. So we've got some red lights there and it goes through a little power up sequence and then now it blinks green. Um, let me grab a bill. Okay. I grabbed my wallet and, um, so you can see that if I put the dollar bill in here, it will read it and should accept it. Just, it reads it and it just drops it down there. Now it will not be able to read a 50. So I'm going to drop that in and it's going to kick it right back out to me. Now, um, it's pretty neat. And, uh, so it has another feature, which is when I was talking about the five volts and the 12 volts, I'm going to power this off just so. Uh, I don't short anything out, but if I were to take the yellow and put it to five volts, 
and the green, I'm just going to put it to the other ground. I need to tighten that one terminal up. Um, so if I put 5 volts here, you'll see something different happens. So, I'm going to boot it up. And now it's going to keep flashing yellow and it's going to refuse to accept the bill. So one of the things that's interesting about that is you can actually use the Arduino to send just a tiny 5 volt signal to this uh, thing if you want to make it not receive bills. So like if, if maybe if you're writing a little program for it and you only want it to accept bills at certain times, writing the 5 volt pin high will force this thing to not accept the bill and then when you disconnect that 5 volt signal, uh, you can drop it back in here and accept the bill. So um, now the next thing is reading it. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So um, there's some different dip switches over here on the side that can determine uh, how likely it is to accept a bill, how fast of a signal it's gonna send when it sends the bill. And, and basically you can have this thing um, sort of emulate quarters. So if you think about an arcade machine, uh, especially back in the 80s when they had quarters, you would, I showed in the coin mech that when you would drop a quarter in there, um, it would just, all it was doing was just hitting a little button, closing a switch, and the thing would register that one pulse as a quarter. And then um, what they decided to do on something like this is you can basically set up to pulse four times, or, or four signals, not necessarily four pulses, but four signals for a dollar, uh, and then you know five times that for five dollars, ten times that for ten dollars. So forty signals would be ten dollars, and it was basically like you were putting forty quarters in the machine. Uh, so I thought that was pretty nifty, um, but it wasn't readable. All the different pulse libraries and things like that on the Arduino, I never got it to uh, to be able to read. So I wrote a little Arduino program. Let me go find the Arduino, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've done is. Uh, I've taken the cash machine, it's powered up right now and just blinking green, ready to go. And I've hooked it up to an Arduino. So it's still being powered by the ATX power supply. But the blue wire, which we haven't used yet, is connected to pin 15. Doesn't really matter which pin, just any input pin on the Arduino. And the purple pin goes to ground. And you will see that if I put the 50 in, then absolutely nothing happens. But if I put the dollar in, Then it's going to say the bill's accepted and one dollar total has been taken in and uh, every time i put in a new bill we're going to get that total going up and so uh kind of a fun little hack uh like i said the different libraries for the arduino didn't work for me but this is what worked for me if uh the code would probably have to be modified to count the pulses a little bit more accurately if um you're using all the different build types. So if I decide to do that, I'll write some more code and share that with you guys. But for now, this is my first little hack attempt at the bill acceptor. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.